Students, this week we're looking at the process of industrialization of the United States. Uh, a lot of the focus over the rest of the course will be on this journey by which the United States goes from being a collection of colonies to being a unified and integrated nation while continuing to expand. And this is a significant challenge and we've seen how in recent weeks, the Constitution, the War of 1812, are all focused on or all contribute to achieving this. And so you have these different tensions in play. On one hand, you want to forge these colonies into a nation. On the other hand, you want to protect the freedoms that are seen as central to the American ideal, the reason why you created the nation. And at the same time, the nation continues to expand and the the challenge is to keep it all together and so we're looking at the ways the economic ways in which this nation becomes more unified during the 19th century and part of uh, the challenge but also the opportunity is driven by a huge boom in the american population that's taking place in the years around the war of 1812 especially once the war's over, that's no longer a threat. We see a huge rise in immigration to the United States. Um, the population of the United States around 1800 is estimated to have been about 300,000. 20 years later, it's estimated to be about 2 million. So the number of people who are citizens of the United States, living in the United States, is growing very, very rapidly. Not only the population, but also the size of the United States is growing rapidly. And Americans are more and more moving further inland and moving west of the Appalachian Mountains into Kentucky, into Ohio, into Tennessee, um, and even into uh, Illinois. And so by the time we reach 1860, by the time we're coming towards the end of this class, about 50% of Americans will live west of the Appalachians. And 30 to 40 percent of those born in New England will move out of New England and into uh, what for the moment we're calling the Midwest, that area in between the Appalachians and the Mississippi River. And typically they're being drawn there by the more fertile lands um, that are enabling them to be more successful farmers. And so one of the ways in which industrialization is going to support the further integration of the United States is through uh, farming that's becoming more effective. The early farmers in the United States, especially those that were growing crops, were basically farming for subsistence. So you have the tobacco plantations and then the cotton plantations, uh, which we'll talk about more next week. Um, in, in the south, but New England, it's much more about subsistence farming. It's rocky soil, you're basically just trying to grow enough to be able to feed your family. Even in the middle colonies that are, are producing a lot of food, um, that requires a lot of labor. Remember, we talked about the importance of indentured servants. Only a few people can be big time farmers who are selling their surplus on. That starts to change in the 19th century because of, of a couple of important inventions. Um, a new, more efficient plow, a new uh, efficient seed drill, which makes the planting of seeds more effective, and then um, a mechanical reaper, the first mechanical reaper. This is a huge game changer. It means that instead of having one person reap about half an acre of grain a day during harvest time, two people can uh, harvest 12 acres in a day. So a huge increase in efficiency, the amount of land that can be farmed, the food that can be produced from um, these uh, farms. And uh, this means that farming in the United States is becoming more efficient. It means that people are going to want to move further west where there is more land available, which they can now farm with these more efficient techniques. And it's going to mean that because you have this food surplus, you can support other parts of, a, of an economy. Not everyone has to be a farmer. And so you see the rise of businesses like the factories that are going to make the plows and the reapers. And so uh, the advancing efficiency of agriculture in the United States is a big part of it uh, becoming more industrialized, which is a big part of it becoming more integrated together as a country.
The other major way in which the United States is becoming more integrated as a country is through improved transportation. We're going to talk about road transportation, we're going to talk about water transportation, and we're going to talk about railroad transportation. Probably uh, not all in this video. We're going to start by talking about road transportation. The early years of the United States, travel along the roads was notoriously bad. It would take four days just to travel from New York to Boston. What does this mean in economic terms? In economic terms, it means that if you're a farmer, even if you have one of these new mechanical reapers, you have one of these new seed drills, you're producing way more food than your family needs, it's going to spoil before it gets to any market other than your local one. And so, in the 19th century, we see a focus on providing uh, more and better roads, more and better roads, more and better wagons, and even an understanding that the United States government should contribute to building these roads. The federal government should build roads that connect the states. Uh, I've highlighted in this week's material the National Road, which goes from Maryland to Illinois. That was 600 miles. <clears throat> and then we're also going to see um, turnpikes, private roads uh, being built. Um, by 1821, you have 4,000 uh, miles of turnpikes that have been built. Private roads, privately built, you pay a toll to use them. All of these roads, these advancing roads, help farmers uh, disperse the crops that they're growing to a wider audience means that you can have larger cities because you can feed the city with uh, agricultural produce that's uh, that's coming from further away and so we're going to see that those farmers that live further away from the big cities farmers that live in places like illinois and ohio are going to want the federal government to spend money building uh, on infrastructure on roads and other ways to improve transportation so they can sell what they're growing to uh, a wider market. And then we also see um, improved transportation or speedier transportation uh, coming along with the creation of uh, Wells Fargo coaches and the Pony Express. These are ways of disseminating news much more quickly across the United States. It had taken weeks or about a week um, for New York to learn that George Washington had died in Virginia um, in 1798. And by the time we get to sort of the middle of the first half of the 19th century, it takes about eight days by Pony Express to travel from uh, Missouri to San Francisco in California. And so this gives you an idea of the change that these improved roads make to how integrated the United States is. And in the next video, I'll talk about the other ways of transportation, rail and water.